Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I have a different kind of review today with this new Infinity QX60. I have a variety of different tools to measure paint thickness and gaps and show you exactly what's going on in terms of this new Infinity QS60. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the paint thickness and I use a standard industry tool for this. It measures in either uh, mils or micron. Micron is a standard now so that's what I'm going to be using. And typically paint thickness is supposed to be between 100 and about 180 microns. If it's way thicker than that, like over 200, then likely that paint was repainted. So you can tell that uh, it, was, uh, it had uh, some kind of body finish or body repaint. But typically on a brand new factory uh, vehicles, it should always be between 100 and 180. If it's lower than 100, then it's too thin. And that means someone has, I don't know, manipulated or tried to fix a paint job. So lots of interesting things you can figure out by using the paint thickness gauge. So it's particularly useful for uh, buying used cars. But anyhow, on this Infinity QX60, let's see how good the paint thickness is. It's at 117 here. So uh, that's pretty well standard, as I mentioned. It should be between 100 and 180. The thicker the paint, you can argue that it's a little bit better. Uh, but of course, with efficiency these days and uh, focus on cost reduction, uh, paint uh, manufacturer and car manufacturer will try to reduce the paint as much as possible. Now keep in mind that as you go from top to the bottom, the paint thickness varies because of the way the paint manufacturing works. But anyhow, let's check the fender here and the door as well just quickly. So it's a thinner paint on the front fender. Uh, 107 here and then uh, should be about the same here 108 so it's pretty consistent but a little bit on the thinner side which is common on the side panels but this is aluminum this is aluminum and so is this one now this might be just aluminum skin of course the reinforcements inside would be steel now these are all aluminum here as well and if you go to the top It's a bit thicker, 122 microns. So this is pretty well standard, nothing unusual. But in terms of the overall paint quality, I've been looking at it throughout the uh, vehicle uh, in the more brighter light outside, and it's being uh, very, very good. Uh, the gloss is better than what you find in Nissan. So this is based on Nissan Pathfinder, but the paint thickness, uh, the paint gloss, the consistency of the paint, and uh, pigmentation and the orange peel are first class. It's a little bit better than the Pathfinder that I saw earlier, and uh, also maybe as good as Lexus even. So I think the paint quality overall, I would give it a solid A, and then the actual paint thickness is also pretty well standard. So that's all good. So now we're going to check the body gaps and how well the panels have come together using a digital uh, caliper like this. Now in the real world, in the actual auto in industry, we use a laser equipment to measure precisely how the panels uh, fit together. But here we're gonna just do a quick check. So I have been looking at the panels from front to back and it is better than most uh, cars I see out there. So it's about four millimeter if you look at the gap. And the most important thing is does the four millimeter stays all the way through to the end. So it goes from about four to about 4.5 millimeter, which is first class. So usually you want the gap to be less than five millimeter in the front here. And as you go to the back, of course, the, um, the actual measurement changes a little bit. Uh, and in this particular infinity, from all the way to the front to the back, every gap I've measured, it's about four to five. So this one is also 4.5, which is excellent. And then this is about 4.6 and goes all the way to the back, so it's really well built, and uh, the panels fit together well. I've done a bit of my uh, 
test here with my finger and ping pong ball and the panels are aligned well. I did notice a little bit of a misalignment here on both sides of the hood, uh, but nothing out of the ordinary. And again, if you're asking me, is this car as well built as a Lexus? In terms of body panel and the paint job, it absolutely is. Uh, so let's find out now whether or not the inside is also well built, and I'm gonna do my engineer's audit in the interior. Okay, so we're inside the Infiniti QX60 now, and uh, first thing first, of course, the interior is beautifully done, and something that uh, Infiniti is very good at, thanks to, I think it's a, a partnership with uh, Renault in France, I think there's lots of uh, European influence in terms of design. So the interior has always been a strength of Infiniti uh, overall design-wise, but what about the quality? So I'm gonna do my little punch test, which is just taking my fist and punching away different parts of the panels to see if I can replicate a potential rattles or squeaks. So, so far everything is solid. Sometimes manufacturers really struggle with the headliner because the adhesive can come off and uh, they become a really terrible source of uh, noise. But on this one, so far, all is solid. And then the other thing that you always check for is the uh, gaps between the panels and also the stitching. The stitching is surprisingly difficult to get it right. And uh, you know what, in this Infinity, look at how they've done the stitching all the way through, even this through uh, narrow parts of the uh, component and it's almost perfect. I don't see any kind of deviation or uh, misalignment and all the panels come together. So I give interior wise, both quality and aesthetics, a solid A+, plus. it's really well built. Um, now I do have to make a little comment about the ergonomics in terms of the design element they've decided to incorporate in, in this QX60, which is this kind of haptic design for the controls. Now thankfully they kept some of the controls in terms of physical buttons. So we get the button for the volume, for the temperature, and the rest of stuff is kind of like a semi-haptic. So when you press on it, you can feel it vibrating, but the actual panel itself is not moving. This is the same technology they used in uh, older cell phones actually, way back in the days when uh, Blackberry first introduced the haptic design. But it works well. It's better than just a pure touch panel because you get feedback, um, but still it is not as easy to use as something that has lots of buttons. But that's okay. We're moving in an era with less and less physical controls and more and more digital controls, so that's understandable. And we got lots of buttons on the steering wheel anyways. So overall it's good, the quality is excellent. I love the design of the inside. This one is not the top of the line model. If you move up one more level, you get quilted uh, uh, seats and so forth. But this looks fantastic to me so far. And the overall seat comfort and the overall roominess is also uh, superb on in both in the front seat and the second seat. Obviously the third row of seat is pretty tight, not really for long-term trips, uh, but it works for younger kids or younger teenagers uh, and otherwise I'm actually loving the interior more so than the exterior which I think is a little bit bland to me. So now let's talk about uh, what's new with this Infiniti QS60 and take it out for the drive. So now I'm taking the Infiniti QX60 out on the road here. Uh, it is an all new model and it does share the same platform as the uh, Nissan Pathfinder, but it feels quite different because of all the different tuning and so forth. Um, this Infiniti QX60 does have the more or less the same engine as before, the 3.5 liter V6 engine, which is very solid engine. It has 295 horsepower, very competitive. Although it doesn't really stand out uh, you know, among the many other three-row luxury SUVs out there. Plenty of power and torque though, and thankfully they moved to a nine-speed transmission, which is uh, far better than CVT transmission that uh, we had before. It shifts well, uh, the engine is, has a good, uh, good torque um, in terms of the driving feel. It has a very comfortable, smooth, a very refined feel, and very quiet, and very noticeably uh, smoother and more refined than the Pathfinder, which tend to be very bumpy over some rough road. But I will say that uh, one of the weakness of this QX60 is the steering effort and the steering feel. It is quite numb, almost no road feel from the actual road, and it's very 
light. So if you're a type of person who really like a very light feel and kind of airy feel, you'll love this Affinity. But if you want a bit more of a steering effort and something that gives you a feel of what's happening on the road, then this might not be the right one for you. I think the Acura MDX provides better steering effort and a little bit of a sharper handling. But that's okay, the QX60 wasn't meant to be a performance-oriented model, so perhaps that is not a big deal. In addition to Acura MDX, it also competes with uh, the likes of uh, uh, Lexus RXL, even though that's a bit of a compromised, stretched version of the RX. Uh, also competes with other European models like the Audi um, Q7 and maybe some of the Mercedes and BMW models as well. I think the European models all handle a little bit better. They have a better road feel. It's more fun to drive. But this one is very smooth and quiet if that's what you really want from SUV like this. The pricing is very attractive. I think it's a very value-oriented pricing. Uh, and overall, you get lots of room and lots of space in here. So uh, you're not going to be disappointed if you wanted um, a luxury SUV that has a really good upscale interior with a smooth, comfortable, refined feel. But I will admit that um, the driving part of this is not so fun, and I wish that Infinity can uh, dial in a little bit more of the performance feel uh, so that um, those of us who want to have a three-row SUV but who also want to have fun driving can actually enjoy driving this vehicle. So what do I think of the QX60 in conclusion? Well, let me summarize in what we call the SWOT analysis version, which is strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Well, in terms of strength, it's pretty obvious. Very feature-rich, luxurious, very comfortable and quiet and refined, beautiful interior, and overall, it provides good value. But what about the weaknesses? Well, it's hard to stand out among so many other luxury SUVs, especially when you compare it to the Acura MDX, which is a benchmark. But even when you compare it to the European counterparts like Audi Q7s or BMWs or Mercedes, uh, it's a little hard to stand out because the driving part of this uh, QX60 isn't so amazing. It's a kind of traditional drive feel, but you get no road feel at all. It's very light steering and it's not all that fun to drive. So that's definitely the weakness. I wish they could uh, make it a bit more of a driving engagement type SUV so that we can enjoy the um, uh, driving as much as we enjoy being a passenger of this QX60. Uh, in terms of opportunities, well, you know Acura is coming up with uh, MDX Type S. So Infinity, what about if you come up with a high performance version of this? That would be quite interesting and may bring more audience and customer to this particular brand and this model. So opportunities would be for Infinity to try something a little bit different and go out of the norm and give us a high performance version. Finally, the last part is called the threat. In that regard, again, there's just too many competitors with good features and good quality and good ride that it's hard for QX60 to stand out. And also, it's very close to Pathfinder in terms of the overall performance. It's based on the same platform. Uh, yes, you do get more features and more luxurious stuff on this uh, QX60. But if you look at the top of the line Pathfinder and compare it to this one, maybe there's not as much difference as people think. So those are some of the things you need to be aware. So that's it for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching my uh, YouTube channel. Really appreciate you guys being here. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you can. But for now, I'm signing off. Thank you again.